G'day mate, welcome to Capital Industry with me, Jenny. Today, we're looking at another island. Another island, another island that has reached that pinnacle of automation. Uh, that's supreme in, um, well, satisfaction. Those that have reached sustainability, sustainability, 100% sustainability. Those that can run their games forever and never have to touch. And how do you do this, you may ask? Well, you need to rule out any internal and external resources. So you can't have any materials that you need to dispose of, like slag. Can't have any of that. That needs to all be automated. Uh, no dumping stuff into the sea. No digging up stuff from the island. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. You need to have a situation where everything comes in from the world, either from contracts or world mines, or everything is grown and made on the island. And today we're looking at a new map by um, Sherman. Hey Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Who, I'll show you the original map. It is the You Shall Not Pass, you know, the one with the very, very tall peaks and the not a load of area to start with. And then we have what he sent me. What he sent me in, I don't even know what year it is, but it's in the future. And um, he's done a small renovation, as you may tell. Yes. Uh, now, most people go for 100% flat island. He decided after he got up to the plateau, no, this is going to be my place. This is going to be where I live. And he decided this short horseshoe shall be his. So we're going to have a quick look around the map. And as you may tell from the screenshots uh, or, or from the thumbnail, the, um, the belt work is unique. Yeah, uniquely as in, um, well, the AI did a very good job of rattling those belts, yes. Uh, but we want to have a look. We want to have a look. We want to have a closer inspection. And that is going to be important to today's video. So we're going to start uh, with, well, Mr. Shippy Shippy. We have Mr. Shippy Shippy down here, who is doing a whole lot of nothing, obviously, and a dock that is a shipyard that is empty. I, I appreciate a good empty shipyard. Uh, we also have a couple of pumps down here, uh, the trading dock. And then as we work around the island, we get to the shipping coast. The shipping coast. This is the coast that handles all the contracts, which means we need to look at the contracts. And as you can see, I did mention slag earlier because you can't dump slag in the sea because, well, eventually you're going to run out of area to dump and therefore the island wouldn't be sustainable. So he's taking the uh, slag to sour water contract. But also you need to have all the raw resources come in to feed the island. So you have to bring in limestone, you have to bring in iron, you have to bring in copper, you're going to have to bring in coal, obviously you're going to have to bring in quartz for sand, crude oil to make sure you have diesel to run your ships, probably, you could probably get away with biodiesel, but we'll leave that for another conversation. Um, in theory, normally you would chop trees and plant trees, uh, previously you get away with the, the sawmill, now um, he's choosing household appliances for wood which means he's probably not chopping many trees. Uh, also, any excess sulfur he has, he's disposing for sludge. Uh, and we actually have a couple of crude oil contracts, which we'll get to in a little bit, along with a couple of quartz contracts. But um, a couple of things I should mention very quickly as the ship leaves. This one's doing the quartz contract, and this is laptops for quartz. You may also notice that it has um, only got two modules on it, i.e. the export and the import. He could load that up more. He could load that up an awful lot more. And, and well, the contract is, if we bring this back up, it is 116 for two, uh, 2520 and the ship's gone. Um, a solid module or a loose module is 360. So he could have one unit module with the laptops and then every other module could be the quartz modules with the loose materials and he would be fine. The thing is, he's chosen to have one for one to up his diesel count. He's wasting diesel. He's wasting a diesel in a number of ways. This is not one of them by having all the ships have only one little module in a level eight dock. If they're in a level two dock, do I have docks? I do have docks. I do have docks. Can I get a cargo dock level two? Does he have a spare ship? I don't think he has a spare ship. Uh, if you had a tiny itty bitty ship, it'll use less fuel. And that comes down to what size dock it parks at. Because this is a big dock, it has, um, well, a big requirement for fuel. If you have a little one, I think it uses like 18, 20 fuel for a little one. Um, it's it's quite scary, actually. You know what? Uh, we have a trading dock. Can I just buy a ship? Not enough workers. Oh, I probably broke something by ordering a ship. Uh, 60 fuel. Uh... 90 fuel, 60 fuel, 60 fuel, 60 fuel. He could cut back his fuel by an awful lot by just downgrading his ship. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 120 fuel per single journey. 60. He could cut his fuel in half by just downgrading all the docks. And also we could squeeze all the docks back in. But that's besides the point. All right. So 
one small little thing I've noticed there. Uh, on top of that, you might notice that, yes, this was obviously set up to do a lot more sand previously, but as he has re reached more and more sustainability, he's actually cut back the island, cut back the island an awful lot. He's removed a whole lot of excess production. He's also removed a whole lot of excess trucks. In fact, he has 100% stable on the trucks because there's none left. They're all dead. He removed all of them. Um, which is a very different way of running things. Normally there's a couple of trucks hanging around just as spares in case things need to be moved around or, you know, you want to build something. He's going with that, no, no, any trucks. So, uh, yeah, first ship is doing our uh, quartz. Our second ship is bringing in rock from the world map because you need to bring in rock for medical three to make the hydrogen fluoride so we can brush your teeth with it to make sure your medical needs are fine. So do need to have uh, at least one world map running in saying that it is an infinite map so it still means you're 100 sustainable next up we have gold for uranium now obviously he's obviously got a couple of nuclear reactors on this island so he's bringing in the tiniest amount of uranium to keep them running next up we have uh what's that coal for rocking chairs yep uh the next one is absent which is gold for crude oil gold we'll have a conversation about shortly uh we also happen to have gold for Diesel or is it diesel for gold? It's diesel for gold. It's diesel for gold. And that one is gold for crude oil. And again, like 150 diesel per ship. Whereas we built a smaller dock, smaller ship, less diesel. Um, then we have gold ore for service. And as you can see, this one's entirely paused. It's not like running. Then we have copper ore for household appliances. And next up, we have the servers for iron ore which is an odd contract to say the least. We have household appliances, household, household. It is household appliances, household appliances for wood. We have uh, limestone for construction parts. This is the only limestone contract. So everybody has to have this one for limestone at least. Uh, we have a whole bunch of dumps. Uh, we have, this is the slag for sour water. This is the only way to get rid of slag in an infinite sustainable way. Uh, we have another pause ship, which was doing laptops for crude oil. And then as you run away, ah, you're doing our sulfur for our sludge. Yes. And then we have our first um, belting adventure. Everything is automated. So it means every single product that needs to come down here being, well, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, because obviously we need diesel down here for all the ships. Uh, that's an export, so that needs to come back and go up. So we're going to go with 20. Uh, we already don't have consumer electronics. 21, 22, 22 plus belts in this area. Um, oh, plus stone. 23? 23? Um, also, obviously, he's got brine being dumped, so 24 plus. Um, I, I imagine there's probably some redundancy, like whatever this belt is, is definitely probably redundant by now. No, hang on. It's hooked into a belt that's moving. Uh, that's slag. Okay, no, it's hooked into a belt that's moving. Um, redundant, maybe, possibly. I, I, I don't know where it came from. Uh... Yeah, he's got a little bit of automation. He's also got a little bit of a, a belt highway, a belt river, you may call it. A belt waterfall, which brings us up to the plateau. The plateau, where we're going to start talking through things. Because, as I did mention, he's cut back on his population. And we're going to find this being very, very common on this island. A lot of things are paused. A lot of things are no longer running. A lot of things have been shut down. In fact, like this is construction parts. Uh, construction parts. Vehicle parts. Vehicle parts one, two, three, uh, which he doesn't need anymore. So, they're all well that's fine uh they're all dead uh that's the vehicle depot which is also dead uh this is his stockpile from all the vehicle parts after he removed all the trucks like there's no way to recycle that there's nothing you can do with it apart from leave it sitting in a box forever technically i guess you could delete the box put it in the shipyard and then press the delete button in the shipyard but it doesn't really help you um same with solar panels he's got a solar panel or three because obviously he went heavy to solar and this is the solar cell mono you can't do anything with it he's 85,000 solar panels um the solar cell single at least you can sell that and that looks like what he has done 
because we notice there is a cancel button on this contract. He could cancel this contract. Same with the uh, gold ore. We're, we're going to get to gold ore in a minute, but technically he could also cancel this contract. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's bring us, bring us to oil. Let's talk about oil for a second. So first thing you may notice is uh, a lot of it's paused. Um, in fact, that's sour water stripping, which a majority of it's paused. Uh, that's a bunch of boilers that are no longer needed because they're paused. Uh, he has one, two, three, four oil modules. That's all he's running to keep the whole island running. And most of his fuel is uh, cargo ships, that line. He's using about 300, 300 diesel per month on average, and it's all being used in cargo ships. And he does not even bother to have the ship fuel saver turned on. Just hasn't bothered. Like, he does have maintenance reducer one, too, because that makes sense. Obviously, recycling all the way up to recycling increase number four, because that's going to be very important to get sustainability. Farming boost, also the water saver. So his farms have an increased yield by 10% with water man's uh, increase by 10%, and then turns on the water saver, which then drops the water need by 20%. Then another 10% for a 30% reduction total, total with another five on that. So it's a 35% reduction on both the settlement and the farms. And then he's got this one in for have a 10% increase in output from the farms with a 10% increase in, in water, which is still lowered by 25% for this. Yeah. And he still has seven uni per month on average, on average free. You know, as different contracts get executed is probably the best way of putting it. Then you will have a situation where your uni will have suddenly a, a giant dip in it because, well, a contract happens, so you have a cost per ship. Although he now has two module ships, so the, con the, the uni cost is very, very, very small on a per ship base basis. Um, so yes, he could definitely do more things like he, he could definitely probably have clean panels, but now with the advantage of uh, fast breeding reactors and nuclear, you just don't really need to have solar panels anymore. Anyway, back to our story. Um, so yes, he has, as you can see, did have a lot more oil production, but um, doesn't anymore because he just doesn't need it. Um, so more than half his oil bills disappeared. Uh, he does have cracking that he's not using anymore. Uh, in fact, a majority of his fuel, his diesel, comes from these guys. These guys which were taking the excess sulfur, because he does have excess sulfur, uh, that belt there, which goes off to one of the ships and trades the excess sulfur back for poop, at which point he processes the poop into fuel gas and compost. Compost is, I'm assuming, going to fertilizer, because that's really the only place you can put it without having to have a truck, a, tr a truck dump it as dirt. Uh, and also um, is providing a whole crap ton of fuel gas. On top of that, there is this fuel gas pipe here, which if I just zoom out a little bit, goes over to food processing over there, which takes any excess food and also turns into fuel gas, which um, brings the fuel gas into here. So fuel gas, we have number one. Uh, fuel gas goes to hydrogen, first off, obviously, so we can continue with heavy oil cracking. And then any excess fuel gas pops into... Is it these ones? These ones. Pops into these ones and gets converted to diesel. On top of that, his naphtha goes into rubber first. There is one rubber plant. One rubber plant. All these ones are paused. They're not doing anything. One rubber plant on the whole island. That's all he needs. It's 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 shocking how much how, how little you need after you really start going through and cutting back and and really automating everything. So he is uh, putting naphtha into rubber first rather than diesel. He could use diesel, and then taking the naphtha uh, and then cracking it to fuel gas rather than cracking the diesel directly, and then taking all the fuel gas and cracking that into diesel. And diesel's really the end outcome. He he wants diesel to well run ships. Oh, there's more sour water. More sour water cracking right here. Uh, again, that can go away. Uh, we've got a couple of scrubbers. Scrubbers no longer used. We have even more cracking, not used. We have these guys, which are... Oh, this is our fertilizer one. So we have our ammonia, then our fertilizer one, and then our fertilizer two to feed the farms. Uh, we have a couple of air separators to provide the oxygen for the fuel gas cracking. Like, we can see his oil build, a large percentage of it doesn't exist. Like. None of these, none of these. They were all running at one stage. They were required at one stage. Um, look, there, 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 yep. They're all dead too. And, nope, oh, oh, that one too. Cool. I think I'm getting most things as, as we go along. I wanna, I wanna really give a before and afterwards so you can see exactly what is running out of what is built, you know. 
There's a lot of belt spaghetti. We can see that much, but there's a certain amount of the island that's just not running. Uh, concrete slabs. He has one machine. One machine that is providing all the concrete slabs on the island because... Actually, what would concrete slabs go into? Uh, construction parts two. Construction parts two for limestone. Uh, yeah, so um, concrete slabs, same story. It's been mostly retired. Uh, this was doing gravel and a manufactured sand, and this was doing rock and a gravel. Again, it's retired. Uh, you two are doing acid and also uh, slag output from excess sulfur, um, also retired. Yeah, we can see that already that large parts of the island are retired. This is glass. Glass is going into, don't forget contracts wise, it's going into glass rocking chairs, glass rocking chairs. Also would be going into consumer electronics, yes, via electronics too. Uh, household appliances? I don't remember. Hazard appliances near those electronics too. Yeah, so glass is going to a couple of things. So he's got two glass smelters. He has upgraded the whole island, obviously, to arc furnaces, which are power intensive. But um, we can see he only needs two to run the whole island. Uh, let's pop over this side. This side is um interesting. So we have microchips, microchips. Uh, as we can see, there was a lot more microchip production, even though he is doing servers for uh, servers and consumer electronics, which all require electronics three, which all require microchips. In a number of spots um he has one line of microchips that's that's all he needs and um that pile is just dead as is that pile uh also dead uh as are those guys yeah they've been retired this is gold this is the original gold processing um he has one gold furnace which is running on recycled gold everything else comes from imports in fact he is uh, taking diesel, selling it for gold, taking gold to buy crude oil, to convert into diesel, to take the gold to sell for crude oil, because it's a net positive uh, recipe. If you do this trade and this trade together, you actually get extra gold out of the process because you can convert 440 crude oil into more than 437 diesel. On top of that, you get a little bit of extra gold left over for the tiny bit of uranium you're gonna need to keep your reactors running. Um, but same story, this is all dead. Like, it's 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 dead as a doorknob. It, it doesn't exist anymore. All these settling tanks are gone. All the crushes are gone. Uh, that crush is gone. All those settling tanks are gone. They're all gone. Uh, this is quartz processing, obviously. The whole island is running on one single arc furnace making molten silicon. That's it. And as we can see, like, these machines are not really running. One side is, the other side not so much. Um, so there's just, there's a large part of the island that just don't do anything. Like, all that can go. Uh, brings us on to, well, well, graphite, graphite. Obviously with everything running on arc furnaces, he needs to have a constant supply of graphite. And he has a CO2 pipe. And when CO2, we're gonna get into it in a minute, but uh, most of it's centralized. And um, again, same story. He had multiple to run multiple arc furnaces. They've all been retired. They don't need to be there. He's down to one single machine. Oh, I missed these three. I missed these three. Um, okay. So that brings us into water harvesting. There's a certain amount of water harvesting. We also have the obligatory uh, rocket silo because he did launch a rocket. He did launch a rocket. He did get a rocket launch off before he decided, well, let's see if we're get to, to sustainability. God, I'm having problems talking today. Um, let's go with iron first. Iron, iron, copper, 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 and copper. All right, copper, uh, same story. Uh, none of that works. It's all dead. It's all been retired. None of that works. It's all been retired. Uh, he has two copper smelters running the whole island, which needs to provide, you know, it's copper. It needs to provide all your electronics one, all your electronics two, all your electronics three. That's really about it, actually. Copper mainly goes to electronics. Yeah. Uh, which then brings us on to exhaust scrubbing. Now, exhaust scrubbing, he's obviously had multiple exhaust scrubbers here at one stage which led to many, many, many pipes, which is probably gonna to lead to an awful lot of maths on exactly how many you can get in a row before you need to inject more exhaust to then inject more exhaust to so on and so forth. But he did something interesting. Um, apart from having now too many of them, um, he did something I found really fascinating. So he's, and, and this has come up many times, many times people have said to me, Jenny, Jenny, why don't you run your low pressure exhaust from an scrubber into a low pressure turbine and the answer is normally well i do or i don't it's it's not terribly efficient because you have this efficiency loss because it's only, it's constantly kicking in and out but what he did is he's got two of these guys which is 24 a piece and he's running it through a balancer 
And because it's running through a balancer, it's prioritizing into this pipe to feed this thing at full speed. So technically, uh, can I just change you to power production number one? So you run flat out. Technically, this has 100% efficiency because it is fully loaded with steam at all times. At all times. Because he's put it through a whole lot of pipe balances, which I really like the idea of because it means that you are guaranteeing that things run at full speed at all times. Uh, I should also mention that, well, uh, if I unpause... Hmm. I want to delete things. Uh, actually, you were doing nothing previously. Yeah, you were doing nothing previously. Uh, we can remove all of that. Because, uh, again, it's not doing anything. It's really not doing anything. Like, there were two acid makers. He's been able to cut it down to just one acid maker. Uh, he has a box here with a bunch of copper with a paused belt. He could resume that belt to dump out, well, all the copper into the lines so this doesn't have to run. The catch is its excess. He doesn't need to run it because there is a chance it could always break the stability. Yeah, you know, we've got another acid machine. Obviously, with all the um, the copper right here and the glass processing right here, he need to have a certain amount of acid made in this area. Most of it's been retired. There's going to be one acid pipe, which for the life of me, I cannot find exactly where it comes from, providing all the acid for, well, pretty much everything nowadays. Uh, okay, so let's pop up to steel. Steel, same story. Uh, because all the scrubbing, all the exhaust scrubbing was local, uh, also means he's taken all the CO2. That one. All the CO2, which then goes into, well, we're going to call it a main bus. We're going to call it a main bus. It's not a neat bus, but it's definitely a main. It's definitely the main attraction of the island. Um, this took all the CO2 to... There. We're about to get there. All right, uh, Steel. So Steel, he has gone for a back-to-back -back approach. So you have Steel on the right and I on the left. I actually like this idea. This is a very, very good idea because although you need an awful lot of Steel compared to Iron, you do need a certain amount of Iron, especially if you're going to jump into contracts. Um, if you're going to do mainly vehicle parts, vehicle parts are the main things that use Iron. So if we go into... Uh, I want this. Uh, actually, just give me one of those. And uh, right-click on that. So Iron goes into... Well... Mm, construction parts or you could use no actually it goes into construction parts no matter what uh it also goes into vehicle parts so if you're doing a contract for this one vehicle parts for crude oil that's iron intensive it looks like he's only going to be using iron for construction parts so oh he's got one smelter yeah that is talking about cutting back that is one smelter never mind uh one smelter doing iron yeah it probably only needs one of the metal casters. Uh, as for steel, there are three smelters, three smelters, which means there are going to be two air separators to run that lot. And same story. Um, All of that doesn't exist. None of that exists. It's all gone. It's all been retired. Uh, again, actually, the box is empty. The box is empty. That's not bad. All right. Uh, on to this side. This is where main production is. So again, there, there was groundwater. He stopped pumping up groundwater. There, there's no need. It's full. We just put down a bunch of rain catchers because... Well, he's carved out the, uh, the space on the island to do so. Main production-wise, there is one machine. One machine making Electronics 1. Don't forget, you need Electronics 1 for Electronics 1 stuff, like Construction Parts 2, which is used for a contract. Plus, you need it for Electronics 2, which is then needed for Electronics 3. Plus, it's needed for maintenance. Yeah, there is one machine on the whole island doing electronics too. Don't get me wrong, it is a uh, a robotic assembler Mark II, which if we just do a quick machine comparison, uh, you to you to you, and then can I copy that recipe? So you need eight people, 150 kilowatts to make 24. When you go up to robotic assembler, you go from eight people down to two people. Power-wise, 150 up to 250. Also, now starting to need some teraflops, but it does double the speed. When you go to the next level, so uh, Robotic Assembly 1 or Robotic Assembly 2, and this is why you're going to see this whole area is Robotic Assemblies 2, it goes from 4 teraflops to 8 teraflops, so twice the amount of computing power. Also, uh, 400 and, uh, 250 kilowatts up to 400 kilowatts, but only two people, which means rather than having four machines, people-wise... Four machines doing, uh, you know, a normal electric assembly. You could have four robotic assemblers instead for the same people cost. Sure, the power is higher, but after you get up nuclear reactors and all sorts of things, power sort of becomes a bit of a mute point. And you now have what double, triple, quadruple the output per machine. So like a 16-fold increase in machine output for 
well the same people cost uh now again so uh very quickly electronics uh Electronics 2, I have no idea where PCBs are. I imagine they're here somewhere local. Uh, we also have Electronics 3. We were making solar cells mono, but we can't do anything with those. We're making household appliances. We're making two lots of laptops, three lots of laptops, and servers. No idea where glass rocking chairs are. We'll hopefully find them. Uh, but again, same story. Like, large parts of this are all dead. In fact, I don't think I have a chance to click delete on everything anymore. Uh, we might just do that later. Like, production wise that's it oh missed one that's it that's all that's running everything else has been retired all right uh let's jump up to nuclear reactors so we have a fast breeding reactor which is off it's entirely paused uh we have a second fast breeding reactor which is running at power level three it's not on auto balance and um well neither are the turbines and in fact this power shaft is fully charged this one is just about fully charged, and this one's actually being used. These are power production level 2. This is power production level 3. This is power production level 3 as well. He doesn't need the power. He's burning off radioactive waste, power, whatever you want to call it, to waste the power, because he doesn't need the power. Like, he has a capability of 195 megawatts on the island. He's not using it. Uh, as for nuclear, we have, well... A whole lot of now retired uh, enriched uranium 20% to get uh, MOX fuel up and running, um, which has been retired. We have obviously more core fuel to feed more reactors, also retired. We do have blanket fuel reprocessed into core fuel and uh, enriched uh, blanket fuel and uh, core fuel. Yes, yes, right there to keep this reactor running. This is an old MOX reactor. It's also retired. Um, this is doing the main recycling of the core fuel from the fast breeding reactor with one glass smelter as you can see fitting three of these at one stage. We were making box fuel that's also been retired. Uh, this reactor and everything attached to it has been retired. These guys were making yellow cake and depleted uranium to make you make more blanket fuel. Um, as you can see, that's also been turned off. He just doesn't need the production anymore. He has one machine, one machine making yellow cake to keep everything alive and that is all he needs for right now uh on top of that uh which actually won't come with depleted uranium uh he does have obviously the processing and also filter medium made locally and that brings us into medical medical same story as he's upgraded to the robotic assemblers he's been able to turn machines off but this is a simple you know antibiotics ethanol uh and Anesthetics, yes, uh, and also morphine, all done right here. And because that one, that one, needs hydrogen fluoride, it's smart to do it somewhere near, near nuclear because this is where you happen to have hydrogen fluoride. Uh, all right, we have uh, construction parts one, two, uh, three, and four. As you can see, it's all turned off except for one and two because they're using the contract. Over to this side, this is where all the CO2 for the map is coming where he is plugging into just one machine. One machine is making all the graphite that he requires, basically. And he does have a backup, a backup using coal, chlorine to make an awful lot of graphite, but um, it's put through a balance. It's a supplementary, right? This is the primary and there is not a lot of CO2 left on the map, you know? There's gonna be a little bit from medical, mm, a little bit from a couple of other byproducts, but that's really about it. Uh, that was construction parts. We also have data servers. As you see, they've all been retired as well. Uh, oh, power plant, power plant, uh, old power plant. Old power plant is still burning off biomass, then burns off animal feed, then burns off wood chips when he was shaving the island, and then would burn coal as a last resort to keep the lights on till the nuclear reactors went, went up. But same story. Um, it's 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 the drive shaft is fully charged. It's fully charged. The generator is doing sitting there doing absolutely nothing. He is basically boiling water to make steam which he's then cooling the steam back down to that's it that's it it's it, it, it's cheaper on waste it's pretty much what it is um it's less pollution for the island yeah uh okay this side we have maintenance uh as you can see we have a single maintenance two uh, maintenance three single maintenance two with a single maintenance one yeah and one single machine making mechanical parts recycling was two machines now been cut down to one even with the insanely high recycling increase on the island as well. Uh, on to food and water. So as you can see, there's a number of desalination plants. Uh, you're doing steam depleted from the reactors uh, and the power plants. You're also doing steam depleted from the reactors. You're doing 
super high, no, just high pressure steam. Uh, and that is now his water source. As you can see, a lot of it can go. It does mean he's trucked or trucked pipes, whole lot of pipes to bring all the steam here to process in the water to bring it all the way back. Honestly, water is a giant nightmare. I would have no objections to piping stuff halfway across the map if I could make my future life easier. Uh, we also have trash. Trash is going to obviously go into the incineration plants, which probably explains why we still have one of these running on steam high. Uh, but there's one trash plant for the whole island. Yeah, uh, one wastewater plant for the whole island because he only has 99 poop per minute. Yeah, so one plant will cover everything. Uh, we have food processing. Let's do food processing really quickly. So, farms wise, uh, that, 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 and that are all gone. Um, he's running on eight farms. Eight farms are providing uh, all the potatoes required, all the bread required, all the bread bread required, uh, also excess flour to make cakes, of course. Uh, we have fruit and vegetables, any excess fruit, vegetables, or beet trimmings, or poppy gets turned into fuel gas. Uh, we do have everything turned off here. Yes, everything's turned off here. The fuel gas is now, well, runs into a statue maintenance. The rest of it gets uh, sent off across the island. We do have uh, sugar being made here locally. Also, sugar travels all the way over to medical. Medical. Uh, sugar travels over to medical twice, it seems. Yeah, he's using sugar to make the ethanol on site. Uh, okay. Then we have... Uh, poppy which is stored here before it shipped across the map as well uh, we have a small backlog of sugar i'm guessing he's taking any excess ethanol uh, or excess sugar and burning off somehow probably by turning ethanol and then just wasting it uh we have over here we have our tofu we have a little box of animal feed to feed two chicken sheds that's all he requires to make the meat uh the meat trimmings and the sausages uh, we also have snack production. We, he was doing food pack contract at one stage. So this one, food pack for crude oil. He did mention that to me. And since retired it, because it's very, very labor intensive. And that provides all the food. And as we can see, they're all at a neat 800. Like he has got this so tightly packed down that um, there's, 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 there's not a lot left he could trim. The only thing you do at this point is, uh, well, delete a whole lot of buildings like I have, and also probably attempt to tidy up the belts. But I find uh, the more you tidy up the belts, uh, the more you um, you find there are more belts you need to tidy up and then rearrange, uh, rearrange, rearrange, and then reroute. On top of that, he needs some way to get the resources from the shipyard that off the belts that he's destroyed back into the belts to continue running, which would be an absolute nightmare with no trucks. Uh, so. With that said, uh, I think we're going to just do one last thing, and that is we're just going to use a tiny bit of Unity and then mass deconstruct absolutely everything. And that is um, what's left. What's left? Uh, most of the island. Most of the island has been removed, and as we can see by the dirt patches, um, I don't even think we've got a quarter of the production left over. Oh, actually, I missed a whole pile in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I still missed some. Uh... And I missed all these data centers. There we go. There we go. We're getting close. We're getting close. Yeah, um, there's not a lot of left. In fact, uh, I think this is one of the core things with Capital Ministry. People are always concerned about running out of resources, etc. Um, can I zoom out, please? Yeah, there's no risk of running out of resources on some of these islands. Like New Haven, Smallest Island, first playthrough, maybe it's possible. In fact, he dug a whole lot of ore and just threw it over the back of the island just to get out of his way. Yeah, uh, but this is where we're, I'm going to leave this video. Uh, as always, if you have an island, you have an island that you uh, are especially proud of, have reached some sort of pinnacle of automation, something that, that you think other people would be interested in seeing, by all means, jump on my Discord server, post a message uh, in the Capital Ministry channel. Uh, by all means, tag me to make sure I definitely don't miss it. And tell me some details, tell me some details. But with all that said, uh, this is where I'm going to leave this particular video. If you're interested in seeing more island tours like this, by all means, hit the subscribe button on the on the channel because we will be doing more of them in the future. Also, I'm going to link a playlist. There has been a couple of other island tours uh, from prior to update one. They were all just as interesting, just as interesting in their own unique way. There was even one uh, who was the complete opposite of this and had nothing but OCD when it came to every single belt, rather than... um. This wonderful waterfall. This wonderful waterfall mess that we have right here. Anyway, with all that said, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the very next video. All right, bye.